الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has mercy on us that he pardons us he accepts everything that we have put forth likewise we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he overlooks our mistakes and our shortcomings and that he makes us of those people who are closer to him after Ramadan closer than we were where we began just like uh, this is towards the end of Ramadan, this is towards the end of our sessions in this book, Fiqh al from Muhammad ibn Salim Thaymeen, Rahimahullah. And in today's session, inshallah, we're going to be looking at some of the ahkam of Zakat al Fitr. Zakat al Fitr is a pillar of our religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, over again in the Quran, wa aqimu salam wa atu zakat. Wa aqimu salam wa atu zakat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combines the zakat with the Salat. These are pillars in the religion. Ibn Umar narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Buni al-Islam wa ala khams. Islam is built upon five and he mentioned from them as Zakat. Therefore, Zakat is one of the pillars of our religion and it's unfortunate that sometimes some people, they see Zakat al-Fitr as being a lesser form of Zakat or Zakat that is only for those people who fasted or whatever other misconceptions that they have. This is included in the pillar of a Zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it as something which purifies the person who gives the zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah At-Tawbah, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةِ تُتَحِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهِ Take from them the zakat. This will purify them. This will clean them. Therefore the ulama have said that these ayat, when it comes to zakat, some of these ayat of zakat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this in Makkah. Uh, curse or woe or punishment to the mushrikeen, they do not give zakat. How can zakat be legisl- How can zakat ayat come down in Makkah when zakat was not legislated yet? Zakat was legislated in Medina. Therefore the ulama have said that these ayat of zakat, some of them were revealed in Makkah even before it became a pillar of the religion and it remained ayat which came down with the ahkam, with the obligation in Medina. This teaches us that from very early on when Muhammad was sent with the call of Islam, zakat was being mentioned and the reason why is because of the purification that is within it. Therefore, the ulama have mentioned zakat is internal and external. Tazkiyah is connected to tazkiyah in yourself. And the ulama have mentioned, this is something similar to what the shaykh is going to mention for us now, a sadaqah is connected to sidq. Sidq is what you have in yourself of truthfulness towards Allah and his messenger and his religion and towards your fellow Muslims. Therefore, zakat is a pillar of the religion, not just a click of a button, or parting with some money that you really probably don't want to give away. It's a pillar of the religion because it purifies yourself. It purifies your connection to the dunya. It reattaches you to the akhirah. And as the ulama has just said here, the ulama has mentioned the reason why the word zakat is called zakat and sadaqah is called sadaqah is because a person gives away something that he personally probably wants himself in order to purify himself. And this is the truthful nature of the person who gives the sadaqah, he gives it out of sidq. For what reason? We only give it for the sake of seeking the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the author is talking about the ahkam of zakat al-fitr. It is very important. Hence, it is being made a pillar of our religion. And if we understand it correctly and we give it correctly, we will find that in it there is a purification for you spiritually, physically, in your material, in your akhirah. The Shaykh has asked, مَا الْمَقْصُودِ بِزَكَاتِ الْفِتْرِ وَهَلْ لَهَا سَبَبْ He said, المقصود بِزَكَاتِ الْفِتْرِ Sorry, the question is asking, what is zakat al-fitr? And is there a reason for us to give zakat al-fitr? The Shaykh is saying here, the reason why we give zakat al-fitr is that the person gives it towards the end of Ramadan. And the Shaykh gives the reason. وَسَبَبُهَا إظهار الشكر نعمة الله سبحانه وتعالى على العبد بفطر من رمضان وإكماله. 
The reason why we give this particular zakat, now zakat is the annual one that you have with your savings or with livestock or with harvest or you're on your trade goods. This is a different type of zakat. The Sheikh is making it clear here that this zakat here is connected to the end of Ramadan. And as we will see in a moment, it is wajib upon every single one of us, even the children, have to give the zakat. Why do we give the zakat though? The Shaykh is saying here, out of being thankful towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thankful for what? Did you fast in Ramadan because you thought you had the ability to do so? Did you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan because you thought you had the power and the ability to do so yourself? That you didn't need Allah to guide you and help you? Wallahi al you've probably seen this yourself. On a normal day, you go three, four hours without water or food, you get a headache straight away. And from the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we've experienced this ourselves here. 18 hours, 19 hours without food and drink. And not only do we able to do that for a month, but we're able to stand during the night. Where do we get this, where do we get this ability from? Wallahi al it is none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hadi subhanahu wa ta'ala. We didn't fast because we had the ability to do so ourselves. We didn't pray or do any good deed because we had the ability to do so ourselves. It is ithar shukr ni'matullah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala abd. Bil fitr min Ramadan wa ikmalih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated for this person fasting and doing other good deeds in Ramadan. So the person gives shukr. How does he give this particular shukr? How does he give this particular zakat? Sa'a min ta'am. The Shaykh is saying here that the person gives a sa'a of food. Now a sa'a is not a weight, it is a measurement. At the time of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, they used to have like a container, a cup, and they used to level it off and they used to say this is a sa'a. To so pretend this tissue box here is a container and you would fill it up with whatever. So if you've got dates, you'd fill it up with dates. If you've got flour, you'd fill it up with flour. If you've got rice, you'd fill it up with rice. Whatever it is, you fill it up in this container. Now, if the commodity is heavy, obviously you're going to get less in there. And if the commodity is light, obviously you're going to get more. Therefore, the ulama have differed as to how do we put a limit on a sa' of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, because it is a measurement, not a weight. Now the ulama, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us ulama, they have looked into this and they have said, listen, if you give three kilos, whatever it might be, whether it's rice, whether it's something heavy, whether it's something light, if you give three kilos, then you have definitely met the measurement of the sa'ah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, the shaykh is saying here, it is wajib upon every single one of us to give a sa'ah of staple food that people will eat on the day of Eid before the Eid Salah itself. What's the evidence for this? Now we have a hadith from the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, this is in Sahih al-Bukhari, that he said, فرض رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم زكاة الفتر من رمضان ساعة من تأم وساعة من تمر وساعة من شعي. Sorry, he said ساعة من تمر وساعة من شعي. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam obligated that we give at the end of Ramadan a sa'a, that we've just said here for our equivalent, three kilos of dates or three kilos of barley or wheat. And in another hadith, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made it obligatory upon every single one of us, male and female, children and adult, slave and free person to give this zakat. And this is something that we need to highlight and the Shaykh is saying here also it's very important for us to understand some people are of the understanding that if you fasted Ramadan then you need to give zakat of it. if you didn't fast because of old age or illness or whatever you don't need to give zakat that's not correct this zakat al-fitr has to be given by everyone now obviously children they're not able to do it themselves so the guardian takes the responsibility therefore the ulama have said whoever you are looking after the number of dependents that you are paying for and looking after it is the, your responsibility to make sure that the zakat of fitr has been given on their behalf so imagine if a person has been married and he's got children from different families if he's paying for them he's looking after them then it's his responsibility 
Imagine if a person is divorced and he's not living with his children, but he's paying maintenance, therefore it is his responsibility. Therefore the ulama have said here, as long as the person is responsible for people underneath him, then it is his responsibility. Obviously, once a person becomes an adult, even if he's got children that are adults, then it becomes their responsibility alone. But here, the Shaykh is pointing out that zakat al-fitr is wajib upon every single one of us, male or female, uh, those people who fasted or those people who didn't fast it, adult and minor. The next question the Shaykh has asked here, what do we give in zakat al-fitr? Now, this is a very important question. Some of the ulama have said you can only give certain things that you find in the hadith. The Hanabila have said it is limited to only five things. Some of the ulama have said other things. But to keep it simple and the correct opinion, inshallah, as we find in the hadith, Sa'am min ta'am, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, commanded in the hadith of Sayyid al Khudri and Ibn Umar anhuma, that they give sa' of food, of staple food. So wherever it is that the people are going to use and benefit and eat on the day of Eid, this is what it is. This is all you need to give. So it could be rice. They didn't have rice at the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not in Medina, it wasn't staple food. The ulama are saying here, rice is something that everyone benefits from. Pasta. Uh, but it has to be something that is not going to go bad. It, it has to be something that is going to be measured and stored according to the correct scholarly view. And it has to be something which is raw and uncooked. Because now, look, let's go back to our measurement here. Imagine if I got cooked rice and I filled it up. That's obviously going to be heavier than it had been if it was raw. And the same applies to other uh, you know, things that you might want to give for zakat or fitr. So the ulama have said it has to be raw, it has to meet a certain requirement of weight, and it has to be something that is going to benefit them. And another thing that they have mentioned, when you give it to them when it is raw, then they become the owner of it and they can do whatever it is that they want. If you prepare for them a meal and then say, here, this is a cattle fitter, then they are only limited to what you have given to them. Therefore, the Sheikh is saying here, zakat al fitr is given of staple food that the fuqara, the poor and needy, are going to benefit from, from uh, on the day of Eid. Now, we can learn the hikmah on this now. Islam has legislated zakat al fitr has to be given a day, two days, and we're going to talk about the timing in a second. Definitely before the Eid Salat. Why? So that there is no one from the Muslim community who will be suffering and will not have anything to eat and it will not be a joyous occasion for them. Every single one of us will have something to eat. Every single one of us will have something to prepare. Every single one of us will have something to gather around. <coughs> and if you want, you can stretch this even further in the way that you can look into this. Those people that didn't eat and drink for 30 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated now that they eat and drink out of favor, out of reward, out of comfort. Hence, some of the ulama have said, Eat and drink because of what you did in the days of the dunya. This is what we've said to the people who received the book in the right hand. Mujahid and others from the ulama of tafsir have said this ayah refers to the people of as You fasted. You withheld yourself for the sake of Allah. 18 hours was it? For how many days? 30 days? For how many months did you do that? It will be said to that person, Yawm al-Qiyamah, Kulu washrabu hani and Eat and drink with as much as delight that you want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it as a favor, as a reward for the people of Jannah to eat and drink. Now here's a question. The people in Jannah, do they need to eat and drink? Will you need to eat and drink out of sustenance in Jannah? Therefore, why would you eat and drink in Jannah? Only out of sheer pleasure and joy. These people, they will not need to live. There is no death in Jannah. You don't need to eat and drink in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide you with food and drinks and fruits and wine and honey and milk and water and those things that we can't even imagine. For what purpose? For the sake of you sacrificing 
and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it in the dunya and in the akhirah something which is of joy that people will eat and gather around on the day of their Eid. Eid in the dunya and Eid in the akhirah. May Allah make us those people who benefit from the Eid in the dunya and definitely the Eid in the akhirah. Then the Shaykh goes on to point out something which is important. فَلَوْ أَخْرَجْ مِنْ أَدْدَرَاهِمْ وَمِنْ ثِيَابِ وَفُرُشَ وَالْأَوَانِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَسِحْنَ Now this is important. Some people think that if you put the four pounds in the box, five pounds in the box, that's it, then my zakat al-fitr. This is not correct. The Shaykh is saying here, you do not give zakat al-fitr when it comes to money, when it comes to clothes or furniture or utensils or anything like that. It has to be as the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, it has to be food as given to the fuqara, to the poor and the needy. And this is a view from the Hanafi Madhab. This is an issue of ishtihad, there is no doubt. But the Shaykh is saying here the correct opinion is that it has to be food given to the people who are going to benefit from it. It is not now a zakat that you would give, which is a monetary form of zakat. This is a different type of zakat, and it has to be food that is given. Now here's the next question, and I'm sure you're probably thinking about this now. I've put the four pound in, is my zakat valid or not? The Shaykh is saying here, the asal and in origin here, and this is the question the person's asking here, how do I give the zakat al-fitr? The Shaykh is saying here, you give it to the poor and the needy in your locality. Now this is found within the majority of the madahib. Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi and Ahmed, every single one of them, from these four madhabs have said you need to give it locally because it serves the purpose of what we have just been explaining you give it in Afghanistan there could be people here that are suffering you give it in Burma or wherever it may be of course they need it but it's important for us to understand that has its place and this has its place therefore the ulama have said you are not allowed to give it out within the the distance of Qasr of Salat if you give it on beyond that, some of them have said it's not valid at all. You have to look for the fuqara, the poor and the needy in your locality and give it to them. But the question is now, what if you can't? And what if they are not available? Now the Sheikh is saying here, if there is a need for you to send it somewhere else, then it becomes permissible for us to do so. On the condition that it is given to a poor, needy person. It is given before the Eid Salat. And the person is Muslim. This is actually a question that was asked to the Sheikh, and it was actually a question that came to us from India. A person was asking over there, can we give zakat al-fitr to a non-Muslim? And the Sheikh is saying here, لا لا يجوز. إتاهوا للفقير من المسلمين فقط. And this is the correct view. And although, again, this is an issue of ishtihad. Some of the ulama have said you can give it to non-Muslims. It's well known in the Hanafi madhab. But the majority of the ulama have said this is given to... Because it is zakat, it goes to the eight categories of zakat. This seems to be the correct view. The Shafi'i have said it can only be given to the poor and the needy only. And it doesn't go to the eight categories. It doesn't go to the people in Fisa Bilalah and the other categories that you find in Surah Tawbah. Whatever the case, the Sheikh is saying here, you find a poor and a needy person in your locality and believe me, they exist. Wallah, they're the brothers and sisters, they exist. I've seen it with my own eyes. There are people who are living in universal credit. There's six, seven people in the household. Allah, they can't afford it. And if you were to see some of these people in their living conditions, you would think, how is a person living in the UK and these conditions? And when then we speak to them, they say, we are stuck. Either the landlord will evict us and we have to go live in a hostel amongst drug addicts with six, seven children. Or we live in this situation. What do we do? Allah make it easy for all of the Muslims wherever they may be. So the Shaykh is saying here, look for the poor and needy in your locality. If you cannot, then there is no harm, inshallah, to send it to another place. And the Shaykh is saying here, there has to be a need. If there is no need, for innahu la yajus. This becomes the, the default ruling. You can't just send it somewhere else. And this is what I was saying to you about the box before. You can't just put it in the box and think yeah, it's done. And some people, they do this and they're not sure whether it's going to be paid before the Eid Salah. They don't know whether it's going to be sent to the poor and needy. You have to verify because this is one of the pillars of your religion. 
The Sheikh has then asked a somewhat random question, what if I give zakat to my uh, neighbor, is this sufficient? And the Sheikh is saying the same thing that we can understand, and the reason why I picked this question up so that we can understand the principle that we've just given in the previous answer. The Sheikh says, as long as the person is Muslim, and they are poor, and it is given before the Eid Salat, then you can give it to that person. Next question the Sheikh has asked, what if I give it to someone and we are not sure, now this person is an agent, we are not sure if they have given it to the poor and the needy. Now again, we can understand with what we have previously just said, the Sheikh is saying here, if the person is somebody who is trustworthy and you know that they are going to give it to the poor and needy before Eid Salam, then this is fine, there's no harm in that. But if a person doesn't give it to the poor and the needy, or they don't give it before Eid Salat, or they don't give it to a Muslim perhaps, what's the ruling on that? The Sheikh is saying here, وَلَكِنْ إِذَا تَأَخْرَتْ عَنْ صَلَاةِ الْعِيدِ And this is an example, if they don't do it correctly, وَلَمْ يُؤَدِّهَا فَإِنَّهَا لَا تُقْبِلْ مِنْهَا He will not be accepted from this person, even if he made qada of it, and this is the view of the Sheikh. Majority of the ulama have said, you must make qada of it before Salat al-Maghrib on the day of Eid. So imagine I gave it to you and I said, can you, you know, give it to a poor needy that you know and you send it off to Syria or something like that. And I prayed my Eid Salah and they've not reached the Zakat of Fitr. What do we do? In that scenario, we say, no, carry on. Give it to them before Maghrib on the day of Eid. And this is the view of the majority. But the Sheikh is saying here, no, 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 no. The cut-off period is before your Salat al-Eid. And if it's not reached the poor and the needy, then it is not permissible. Now we have another question where the Sheikh has asked, when do we give the Zakat of Fitr? So now we can understand the timing. The Sheikh is saying here, there are three timings for Zakat al Fitr. A time when it becomes permissible for you to do it, a time when it becomes recommended for you to do it, and a time when it becomes wajib for you to do it. When is it permissible? It is permissible now. In the Hadith of Imam Abbas and others, it becomes permissible for you to give it one day or two days before the day of Eid. And really, if you think about it, it is the 28th day or the 29th day that you have to give it. That is the time of permissibility. The time of when it is recommended for a person to give it is after the, when the sun sets on the day of Ramadan finishing. And it becomes recommended for this person to give it from that time. So that the, the fuqara and the poor and the needy have something that they can prepare for themselves. The time when it becomes wajib is before the Eid Salah itself. And if a person hasn't done it before then, then it is possible that that person is sinning. Now, when we can understand the timings, now you can understand when you need to do this act of worship yourself. We are talking about the person giving the food, we are not talking about the money. If you're appointing an agent, you can give it any time in Ramadan. You can give it on the first day of Ramadan if you wanted, because I'm going to give you the money. Now you've got the money, which is my zakat for fitr money in your hand. And it's your responsibility to give it when? Either on the 28th or the 29th or the 30th. Understand that? Therefore, if you are giving the money, then that can be done any time as long as Ramadan has begun. Here we are talking, the Sheikh is talking about giving the food itself. Now, and we can understand that there are three timings, permissible, recommended, wajib. There are other things that come off from that. So, for example, the Sheikh is saying here, imagine if a person becomes Muslim on the last day of Ramadan, after Salat al-Maghrib. After Salat al-Maghrib, he becomes Muslim. So now, Ramadan is actually over and it's Eid. After Salat al-Maghrib. Does that person need to give Zakat al-Fitr? Sheikh is saying no, because he didn't, he didn't witness Ramadan. But if he became Muslim just before the sun had set, it's still Ramadan. In that scenario, he has to, because the time of wujub is not kicked in yet. Or it has kicked in, in the sense that he becomes Muslim at the time when it becomes wajib. Therefore, there are other things that come off from this, that the Sheikh is saying here. Uh, these are from the questions that was asked to the Sheikh when it comes to Zakat al-Fitr. The last question that we have, uh, the Sheikh is asked here, what should the Muslim do when it has been announced that it is going to be the day of Eid? 
The Sheikh is saying here, الذي ينبغي للمسلم هو أن يكثر من تكبير وتحليل وتحميد. As you come to be comes to your knowledge that is going to be Eid, the Muslim then must increase in making takbir, tahleel and tahmeed. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah. This is because of the statement of Allah, wa li tukmin wal idda, wa li tukabbir Allah ala mahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped you to complete your month. So make takbir of him in another way that this uh, ayah is recited. Allah is the one who helped you completely complete the period of Ramadan. The takbir, the Shaykh then explains that, okay, so now the Shaykh is saying here, increase in making dhikr generally, but there is a specific form of dhikr that a person can do also, which is to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. Or a person can say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar three times in the beginning. In the first one, if you notice, it was only two Allahu Akbars. In this one, the Shaykh is saying you can say Allahu Akbar three times. La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Or you can say Allahu Akbar al-Kabir, Walillahi alhamd. And all of these have been narrated from the companions. The main thing here is that the person increases in making tasbih, tahmeed, and tahleel. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Anybody can do that for you. But if you were to do what the companions did, this would probably be better. And this is what we have just uh, demonstrated for you here. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He facilitates for us our affairs and that He accepts everything that we have put forth mm-hmm. and that He cleans us before we end this month mm-hmm. and that we are of those people who witness Ramadan on plenty of occasions and we are upon khair and goodness and prosperity and good health so that we can worship him to the best of our ability likewise we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he alleviates the pressures and the oppression that is being faced in the Muslim ummah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes it easy for the people of Palestine and the people of Burma the people of the Uyghurs the people of Yemen the people of Sham and wherever the Muslims are going through difficulties likewise we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives shifa to the Muslims wherever they may be and that he gives us a generation that are going to be firm upon their religion and that we will see the glory of Islam return upon the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with that wallahu a'lam sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in I don't think next week we will have a lesson but inshallah we will continue with our Friday lessons this is on a Saturday now because of Ramadan but inshallah we will move it back to Friday uh, and then inshallah an announcement will be made as to which book it will be inshallah it will still be from the books of Sheikh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alhamdulillah we'll be going through the Sheikh's books for three years now roughly and we've still not even scratched the surface of the ilm that he has left behind rahimahullah so it will be something we'll be continuing with the series of something that he has left behind for us to benefit from we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy on him that he illuminates his grave and he puts this on the scale of good deeds يوم القيامة سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك بارك الله فيك